Hello and welcome to this video. I will show you in this video how you can set up a simulation in Houdini and export the height map into Substance Designer. So this here is an example with bricks being simulated in Houdini and export the height map into Designer. So in Houdini I have a small setup where bricks are going to fall down and we can see the results in real time in this view. So this allows us for fast iteration and go back and forward quickly between Houdini and Substance Designer. With one press, I can save this image. Go into Substance. I plug in the new image. And now everything is being calculated. If I want another view, another frame, I can just, maybe I want this frame. I click Render again. Go back here. And it's getting updated instantly. So this allows us for quick iterations and also if you just want to experiment to see what's working we can just simply click and we can see the results. So this can be a very fast way of working. I will start from scratch so you can easily follow along. What I want to do first is create a small simulation and I'm gonna do a box and I'm gonna make a simple brick shape out of it. I'm just gonna simply manipulate the box a little bit. I'm gonna select the faces. If you hold C you can have a little menu. You can also change the type of menu here. So right now I use the polymodeling which allows me to have modeling features here. So I'm just going to do extrude. I'm just going to scroll the mouse. And when I press Q, there will be another extrude added. And scroll the mouse again, and I can go in or outwards. And now I have a very simple, super simple shape. I can also uh, do some beveling on this. I can select the edges and then go here bevel or you can also type it in here poly beveling connect them and as you can see there is a beveling added now. If you scroll the mouse you can control the amount and I'm also going to enable ignore flat edges. So in this area, we don't have any chamfering going on. So we have a very simple brick shape. So you can actually plug in any shape you want in here. I'm just going to use this as demo purpose. Then I want to create a lot of bricks to let them fall down so they stack and layer on each other. And for that I'm going to start with creating a sphere. I'll put a sphere here and I'm going to put it to polygon mesh. I'm going to scale it up and I'm going to put the frequency to 3. So with this sphere what we're going to do with it is we're going to copy the bricks on each point. So this is done by copy to points. And the brick is in the first input and the second input is the sphere. And now all the bricks have been copied along the points. Now we can change the scale if they would like intersect for example too much and just increase the scale. If you want more you can add it here but I'm going to keep it to 3. What could also be interesting to do is to change the shape of the sphere. And we can do this by creating a mountain node. So if we 
render out this, we can see that it's not a sphere anymore and we can change, for example, the height, get a more distorted shape. We can also change the type of noise to what you like. And then when I copy it now, you have a more random placement a little bit. So I'm not going to go in super detail about uh, simulations and destructions. And so once we have this, we can go back to object level. Then we go to uh, rigid bodies. So we want to make a rigid body out of this. And I'm going to use the first one. There are multiple here, like for example with glue, that means that all the pieces will be glued together, but we don't want that, we just want to have a normal uh, simulation, so I'm just going to select my box and then click on rigid body. And then automatically there is a dot network being created, and here we can change some settings. Uh, for simulation, like we have some gravity settings. You can also in here change some of the rotation, velocity, angular, and so on. <coughs> so if we would press play now, it was just going to fall down. Nothing is really happening. Also notice in here that there are a few notes being added for the simulation. Now, they're just falling down, so that means that we need some sort of a ground or something to collide with. If you go into collisions, you can add a ground plane. If you don't have these tabs, you can actually click on the plus icon and search for them here. So we're now, I would like to have a ground plane. You can also do custom surface custom collider. But for now, front plane is good enough. I'm also going to have to move up the bricks like this. And when I press play now, they're just falling down. And now we have a super simple, basic setup. You can always go back into our box and we can, for example, change the geometry or we can add more. We can, for example, add a second sphere and just, for example, duplicate it and maybe you want a second sphere to fall down. And when you press play now, just have more bricks falling down on each other. So also, as this is a quite simple simulation, this is being calculated super fast. So again, if you want to have a different model, you can just plug in what you want, and then we have a different result. So it's quite flexible uh, and input. You can also use some test geometry, for example, to demonstrate it. Uh, the big head. I'm gonna set it to easy. So it's slow. Poly count so it will be fast in calculation. So then we just have like a bunch of big heads, and then we just have them falling down. So, but I'm going to stick to the bricks. 
So what I will do next is I will create a grid. And this grid is going to represent uh, the texture. So I'm going to choose a nice frame here where they have fall down. And I go in the top view. And I'm just going to scale the grid until it fits nicely to the area that I want. I'm also going to this back there too. If you hold Ctrl Shift, you can actually easily uh, scale the grid while it still keeps it or a uh, ratio. So if you want the full simulation, then you can just simply do this. But if you want to have a tiling version of only the center, then you can do something like this or this. So that should be fine. Then from this grid, we're going to create a volume. I'm placing the volumes up and I'm going to change it to vector. I'm going to give it the name C and two dimensional and also non squaric so we can change all the axis sampling divisions. So you can also see that there's not much information going on in here. Uh, but first, I'm going to set some resolution we're looking for so I'm gonna for testing do 512 we don't need anything in the y-axis because it's also the up axis and we only need the 2d information so 512 and also 512 here so it should look like this if you would change some of the values here you should see uh, some changing here going on So make sure you're in the shaded modes. If you would be in a wireframe mode, you would not see that much. Also here for these sample divisions, I'm going to reference them to each other so I don't have to manually fill in three times the same number. So I'm just going to drag and drop and then relative channel. Oh, again, just drag and drop it relative reference. So as you can see they are now being linked if I would change the settings. So I'm going to keep it to 512 for now. Um, and then this is the setup for the grids. Then we also need a small setup here for the simulation. So what I would like to do first is uh, add gradient so we'll also use a few times the tools uh, from game developer set and this can also be found here and you can just simply click update tool set and this will also install them if you have and if you have not installed them yet so if I would plug this in now can see that it's not really working. The reason for this is because in here the geometry has been packed. So these nodes were automatically being created by one of the shelf tools and they have automatically packed the geometry. So I have to unpack, unpack the simulation. And now I can see gradient from black to white and we can boost that here if you would like to do that. I can already sort of see go to top view, sort of like a height map view. So now we have to convert 
this information from this color gradient into the volume so we can use the volume into a cop network and save and save it out as an image to do this we need some volume wrangle uh, I already set this up so I'm just gonna type in array cost volume and I'm gonna click these in and I can already see the result going on here so this information this vex code I've learned from another tutorial I will also link it in the description I can rank it recommend you watching it they will also show a bit more than just this simple setup so it can be a really good thing uh, if you would like to know more about this that you can watch the tutorial so we can already kind of see the result here but it doesn't really look like a height map that is because the system is based actually on your amount of polygons you have so that's a little bit downside of it so i'm gonna make my brick a little bit more high poly so if i would go back to my brick and i'm gonna make it more high poly we can do subdivision or i'm gonna just do a voxel just gonna plug this in here and we have a voxel and i'm just gonna to custom and put it to zero three so something like this you can like change some settings here if you would like that I'm gonna plug this in here so this will also increase a little bit the time of the simulation it's going a little bit slower now because we added more geometry I could also do voxeling after the simulation like we can just simply uh, do a voxeling here that would also work and this is also going to uh, merge all the bricks together And see that all the bricks are now sort of like together uh, we can also do a for loop and go each go through each brick and make them more high poly but I decided to just make them already a little bit high polyer here and then afterwards I can just do a subdivide here oh. subdivide I can just do subdivision here if I would like to have more geometry. I can just do it already here. But I'm going to just keep it on zero for now. Then we have our gradient again. And if I would look at the result now, it's looking way better and looks more in the and this looks more in the direction of a height map you can also like boost it here and we can see the result being happening instantly also if you would play the simulation you can see everything happening in real time So this is then a basic setup to get this result. Then I want to save this as an image and I'm just going to simply do a null node and say out height volume or height map volume height map volume and I'm going to create a cop network Just gonna double click on it and do sop import. Then in here I'm gonna reference my 
out height map volume accept and if you go to composite view you can actually see the result and here it's forced to 1080p but i don't want that i want a game size so i'm going to do 512 and this is then also the result so you can increase the resolution here but you can also uh, increase the resolution of the volume also to get a better quality we can clearly see this so i can also set bookmarks if i hold ctrl 1 i set the bookmark and if i do ctrl 2 here i can easily uh, switch if i would change this to a higher quality you can always see it taking effect here but i can also just uh, overwrite the value create a, a better quality one so in here in the cop network we can already start adding some effects like there is a levels node or we can even create a normal map from this for example this is a normal map i'm going to just boost it a little bit more and we can see uh, our normal map of the bricks but as i'm going to use substance designer i might do it every, everything there anyway so i just want to export image i'm going to type output and i'm going to render only the current frame so only this frame we don't need all the other frames only want one image and here i'm going to change this so don't want an exr and i don't want uh, this part which is basically the number of frames i don't want that i own i every time i save i want to overwrite the file so i can go back and forward between uh, houdini and substance also, I'm not going to include the alpha channel. So to save the file, we just press render. So every time we click the render button, it will save out to this location. So this location is basically your file where it's stored and then the into the render folder. And this is then the result instantly being saved. So now I can open substance i have already super simple setup ready here so i can just drag and drop link i don't need the colors i'm just going to do grayscale and i'm just going to plug it in and i have the result so in here i have a this is just doing nothing just like easy to plug in to plug in uh, the map so I just create a normal, I boost it more. If you would keep it like on one, you won't see that much of it. But I just boost it a bit more. So we really feel the bricks more. Then I get the curvature and I get the AO. And I blend those together and I put it in base color. Then I also invert them to get a quick roughness on there. And of course the height map is the height map. So if we would look closely, we can already see also that this is not the cleanest result. This is because the quality in Houdini is not it's not been set as to high quality so that's also a little bit uh, sometimes the downside of the system but what we can do now once you have set this up we can just click on ever whatever frame you want to like if i want to export this i can just press render go here and i have instantly the result so we can use this system to go back and forward super quickly.
So it's more like a, a stage where you just try out things to see if they are working. And later on I can uh, render out a more high quality version of this instead of this uh, instead of this version. But it's quite nice to have a uh, quick going back and forward. Also if I enabled tiling now we can clearly see that it's not tileable and we can see seams going on everywhere. This can be easily fixed if we go back into Houdini and we're going to do a mesh tiler. So this is also a game tool and as it says it's going to tile meshes, make makes it tileable. So what it needs is of course our geometry. I'm going back to scene view here. So it needs our geometry and it also needs the grid to know uh, where the bounds are from the tiling. So if I would compare the results, we can already see that it changed a few bricks to make it tileable. And if I would open the network and export, now it's tileable. So it's just adding that one node that makes the whole thing tileable. What, can, what you can also do, for example, with the system is to create some kind of color ID map. And for that, we need to color nodes. I'm going to plug in from here. And what I want to do is I want to color from random attributes, random from attribute. So what's happening after the simulation is that e each uh, piece, so if we go to primitive, has gotten a number. So we can see that here, like all the pieces have a number. So we can use this to color. So if we would type in just name in here, type name, do this, oh, something went wrong. We still don't see nothing. That's because this attribute was also in primitives. So I'm gonna to switch to primitives and we have the result. Another example of what you could possibly do is creating something like this, a debris. So just start with a box, bevel it, and then I use the game fracturing sub. So in here, you can have a lot of settings. Right now I have 200 pieces and I changed some of the scattering. This will result in a nice simulation like this. And we can use this. We can use this and again get the height map out of this and open this in substance. Instead of doing subdivision, I'm doing a voxel here. So it was just a little bit easier. And for otherwise nothing has been changed. So in designer it could look like this. Like I mentioned before, what the result in designer is not going to always be the cleanest. Like we can see these lines going on in the, in the stones. Again, the system is quite good for like fast iteration and like experimenting with what you're looking for. For the final result, I can definitely recommend you to bake it. So we can either bake it in Houdini with the simple baker or the the maps baker. So there are a few bakers in here, the maps baker. So with these two nodes, you can try out and baking uh, the maps to get a final and clean result. I can recommend you 
for example, baking it in Designer or in Houdini. So in here, I have used the Designer Baker. So if you import your models and right-click and bake model, we have a baking menu. So we can add a baker, which is the height map that we needed. You can also, if you want some AO or curvature or normal, you can also bake that in here. But in this example, I just used only the height map to get the other information. And you can see that we don't have a lot of artifacts going on that we had before with the real-time uh, solution where you can see it from far away. It looks okay, but for closer up, we have all these lines. And if we use this one, the baked one, you can see it's way cleaner. It gives a nice result. So I also have a example also here. This was the first test I did with the system. It's like some bricks and some dirt that I am layering with it. So I have these uh, glossy bricks here and I can just change the dirt height. Get something like this if you if you want something like this it can be easily done with the system. So I could also just drag and drop my debris and like this in here. And now I have my debris in the system. Now I have something like this. Look at the contrast. So that was it for this video. I hope you liked it and let me know what you think about it.